Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Michael the Archangel. Today we celebrate the Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord, and there are quite a few announcements. As we approach Holy Week, please remember that Tuesday is the Charism Mass at Holy Name of Jesus Cathedral. All are welcome to attend. There are no Masses, Adoration, or Confessions that day at St. Michael's. Confession will not be offered again until after Easter. During the Triduum, which begins on Thursday, there are no daily Masses. We encourage you to join us for morning prayer on Friday and Saturday, and the annual blessing of Easter food will be Saturday morning. At the Easter Vigil, or on Easter Sunday, please be sure to pick up a free copy of the St. Michael Prayer Book when you come to Mass. We hope you enjoy the Easter gift. The Novena Prayer for the, Diac the uh, Diaconate Ordination of Johann Salas begins on Friday. Please take one home with you today. If you normally attend Mass on Saturday or Sunday, or on uh, Mass Saturday or Sunday at 5 p.m., please note that due to the Easter Vigil, there is no Saturday 5 p.m. Mass. And the final Mass on Sunday, Easter Sunday, is at 12.30. That's the final Mass in English. Knowing attendance will be high for Easter Masses, please be aware that 10 minutes before Mass begins, we ask that any seats being reserved be released so that we have seats for those in waiting. We appreciate your understanding. And lastly, be sure to uh, return your Passion Booklet at the end of Mass today so that we have enough copies for later Masses. To support our environmental stewardship ministry, we are going to reuse the booklets in future years. Be sure to take home a bulletin uh, after Mass today for details on these events and other things happening in our parish. Our celebrant for Mass today is Father John de Guzman. Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Victor Malixi. Good morning. Just a brief review of uh, what Frank mentioned, just so that you know this morning and how to use the various resources you have. So the Order of Sung Worship has all the sung materials that you'll need for the Mass. The Palm Sunday booklet will be used for the reading of the Passion. And of course, hopefully you all picked up a palm. And sometimes we forget this, but the blessing of the palms happens for everyone when it's blessed in the back. So just make sure that you hold your palm uh, up as Father John comes in and does the blessing of the palms at the beginning, and then we'll continue with the entrance hymn, which is found in the Order of Sung Worship. And we do ask again that you just remember to return those after Mass. Thank you. Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, The master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut off from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us now go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I turn my back to those who beat me. I, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hasten 
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said,
when he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go to prepare for you to meet the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. As they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I shall have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what, what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. 
Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, cut off the chief priest's servant, or his servant's ear. Jesus said to him in reply, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself by the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him. Their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, Even their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? Have you heard the blasphemy? What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, and the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately, a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, you say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. 
Jesus gave no further answer, so Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them what he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and, after he had had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him. and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting on him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon the Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him, divided his garments by casting lot for them to see which each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one in his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroyed the temple and rebuilt it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge in, in wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes down to take him down. Jesus gave a loud, uh, loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance, 
Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James, and of Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up from Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a, clean, a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. I have to confess that growing up, whenever we would enter into Holy Week, start with Palm Sunday, and I'd come in and I'd see the packets of the Passion of the Booklets, I have to confess that I did experience a little grumbling of, uh-oh, this is going to be a much longer Mass. <laughs> and then there's a homily afterwards. But you know, and I think you all will find this interesting, is that in the Roman Missal, it very clearly outlines during Holy Week everything that we're supposed to do, and specifically for today, in the Roman Missal, it says, after the, after the gospel, the homily should be brief. <laughs> so, in obedience, I will be very brief. One of the beautiful elements of our Catholic Church is the fact that we are so sacramental. It's the essential element of our Catholic Church meaning that we have so many signs, very real, just human things that convey to us the very real heavenly realities of what God is doing for each and every one of us. That's why we call them sacraments. They're the very visible sign of the invisible reality of the way God shares his life with us. And we have so many of them. We have oils, water, ashes, Palms, and they're supposed to give us in just our humanity an experience of what awaits us in the future. And now we're entering into Holy Week, which is not just, oh, this is the end of Lent. This is the most sacred time of the year because not only are we remembering this passion, the story of Jesus Christ, we are called more deeply into it than before. You have the palms. You're remembering the day in which Jesus, to begin this whole mystery, rode into Jerusalem on a colt. Everybody waving their palms, all hail the king, Hosanna in the highest. Only to a th few days later, be the same ones that scream, crucify him. We are entering into this week because the church is not only saying, let's watch and remember who Christ was and what he did. This is not just his story. This is also ours. Because this story, his passion, his death, his resurrection is with us, each and every one of us, in mind. And all of the things that the church is preparing for this week is to give us a very real, not just watching, but participating in the mysteries that are about to come. And so, my message today is simple. 
If you haven't before, or if you do, I could urge you to continue, go to these liturgies. Go journey with Christ. Go to the Chrism Mass. Go to Holy Thursday Mass. Go to the Good Friday Passion. If you're up for it and you can, go to the Easter Vigil. Because these are not just celebrations that say, woohoo, it's almost Easter. The Triduum is separate from Lent and Easter. It's its own thing. And it's our way of witnessing firsthand with the signs of the church that last night before Jesus died, where his friend betrayed him. The Passion is that time where we venerate that cross, the cross which hung our Savior. And the Easter Vigil, where not only are we remembering all of salvation history in all these readings, in the music, in bringing back the Gloria, but we're welcoming so many people into the church, where it's not just this great, woohoo, our church is getting bigger, but the power of Christ and what he did up there is still so very present today in these people's lives who have encountered the risen Lord and have come into his church. Journey with Christ. Literally take those steps. Go to these liturgies. Because our Lord calls us to share not just in his journey, but in his passion, where he carries not just the cross, but all of us. And he carries us to die with him. But we all know that as we die with him, we too will rise with him. Not only at Easter, but at the end of time. Journey with the Lord. Die with the Lord. So that when he comes, you may rise with the Lord. I believe in one God. <coughs> of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and for the world to come. Amen. Trusting once more in God's loving providence, we now turn to him to offer the needs of our church. For the whole church, uniting with one heart and voice to escort our Savior with palms and praises to the holy city as he enters to meet his painful destiny, that we may follow him faithfully to the end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For individuals groups, nations, who, 
like Jesus, have been cruelly betrayed by a false gesture of peace, that the greedy betrayers may come to repentance, and that the true peace be restored through the master's redemption. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who bear the role of prophet in the church, that with the master they, they may have a well-trained ear and words that can rouse the weary and never turn back in the face of persecution. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may allow the grace to bring us with Jesus to the loving obedience that empties us out into our inevitable cross at his side, so that with him, too, may be raised on high by the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. For the courage to look long and steadily at our crucified God, who is speaking his whole world, his whole word of redeeming solidarity and humble divine love to the pain-filled silence of his cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that our elect may experience an identification of their lives with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all the intentions we bring in our hearts to this holy sacrifice, for all who have asked for our prayers, and for our beloved departed ones, especially Dale Bosnick, who has passed through the doors of death with Jesus, and for whom this Mass is offered, Victor Malixi, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you listen and love to the cries of your people. Hear now the prayers we have placed before you, and we trust that you will answer them in accordance with your will. For we ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Luis Raphael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on with my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Of the 